In this video, we're going to take a look at finding the resultant force acting upon an object and the location of this force. A resultant force is the force, magnitude, and direction obtained when two or more forces are combined. Objects usually have more than one force acting on them at any time. The forces acting on an object can be replaced with a single force that causes the object to behave in the same way as all the separate forces acting together did. This one overall force is called the resultant. Finding the resultant force simplifies things. Rather than having numerous forces, you have a single force representing all forces. Force can be described as something that tends to cause motion. Some examples are dead loads, live loads, and lateral loads. Before we get started, let's take a look at the problem. What we have here is a retaining wall that is 6 feet tall and has a 12 foot wide footing. There are three forces acting on this retaining wall. First is a horizontal force of 15 kilonewtons acting at the top of the wall. The second force is a vertical force of 50 kilonewtons acting downward on the top of the wall. The final force is another vertical force of 20 kilonewtons acting downward on the retaining wall in the footing. To start this problem, we must first find the summation of x and y forces acting on the wall. Let's start with the x forces. We only have one x force of 15 kilonewtons acting on the top of the wall. Now we will find the summation of y forces on the wall. We have two y forces acting on the wall. We have 50 kilonewtons acting downward at the top of the wall and 20 kilonewtons acting downward in the footing of the wall. So the summation of y forces will be 50 kilonewtons plus 20 kilonewtons, which will give you a total of 70 kilonewtons for your y forces. Once the summation of x and y forces are found, we can now find the resultant in this problem. To find the resultant r, we must use the formula r equals the square root of summation of fx squared plus the summation of Fy squared. Our numbers calculated above give us 15 squared for the x forces plus 70 squared for the y forces. From here, we take the square root of 15 squared plus 70 squared, which will give us a resultant of 71.58 kilonewtons. Now that we have found the resultant, let's calculate its location. To find its location, we must take the moments of all forces in the problem. Moment is equal to force times distance and tends to cause rotation. Generally, clockwise moment is positive while counterclockwise moment is negative. All forces in this problem are positive forces. The formula we use to find moment is Varignam's theorem. Varignam's theorem states that the moment of force is equal to the moment of all x forces plus the moment of all y forces. For this problem, we can find the summation of moments about A, which is equal to the moment of the resultant of A. To find the summation of moments about A, we must take all forces and multiply them by their distance from A. In this problem, the summation of moments about A will be 15 kilonewtons times 6 feet plus 50 kilonewtons times 6 feet plus 20 kilonewtons times 5 feet. The moment of the resultant about A will be the 71.58 kilonewtons times its distance from A. Since we are trying to find the location, we do not know the distance and we can say that the distance at X will be used to find this distance. Now, when we add up all the forces times their distance, we get 490, which is equal to the resultant of 71.58 times its distance from AX, which is unknown. Now we can take 490 divided by 71.58, which will give you a distance of X equals 6.58 feet, which is the location of the resultant from A. In review, in order to find the resultant, you must first find the sum of all X and all Y forces. Then you must take the square root of the sum of all x forces squared plus the sum of all y forces squared, which will give you your resultant. Then, to find the location of the resultant, you must take summation of moments about A, which is equal to the moment of the resultant about A. 
Remember, when finding the location, you do not know the distance of the resultant from point A. We hope this video has been beneficial to your understanding of calculating a resultant and its location.